Good morning. Let me show it to you. Psalm 34, verses 8 to 10. It says here, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. O fear the Lord, you His saints. For those who fear Him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Lord, I ask even today, as we worship, may we see your goodness in our lives. And God, you said that we are blessed as we take refuge in you. Lord, we take refuge in you. Wherever we are right now, Lord, you are our sure security. And I pray that even as we worship and as we hear your word today, may you assure our hearts of your goodness and faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Through the book of 1 Peter, 
And as we study this book, may we see ourselves in it and be challenged to continue to grow and be strong in our faith. We'll be reading from 1 Peter chapter 2. It says here, So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. You know, we just came from an exposition of who we are in Christ in chapter 1 and the power of God's word in our lives. And now as we start off chapter 2, it shows how to live out our identity. And Peter exhorts us. And I just want to zoom in in three things that I'd like us here to observe. The picture, the action, and the result. From this short verse, three things. The picture, the action, and the result. First is the picture. We are like newborn infants. <laughs> Why did Peter liken us to babies? You know, in their time, functionally, babies, children, have no use in their society. You know, in, in the Greek times, they have no rights because they have nothing to contribute yet. Kumbaga, wala naman sila ang bag eh, ang mga bata. But, in the, but this picture is not something new in the gospel. You know, Jesus himself likes us or used an illustration <laughs> that we should be like the children in receiving the kingdom of God. Are we not aware of that? Diba sa Luke 18 verse 16. But Jesus called them to him saying, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God. And there's another one when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, we are to be like children, not in our ability to contribute something, but in, ter but in terms of our posture. What do I mean? Ito ah. Diba nung, nung mas tumatanda na tayo, okay, hindi na tayo babies, whether we admit it or not, we have our preferences, we have become picky, and we have become self-sufficient. Kaya na natin eh, yung sarili natin. We are self-made people, we are independent, we have our preferences, and we have become picky. But when we are younger, when we were babies, we are always hungry, we would make a scene to be fed, and we would be so dependent on our parents. <laughs> Bakit parang may hugot ako? You see, currently, I have an 8-month-old baby. <laughs> my son, Nisha, okay, doesn't do anything except cry, eat, sleep, and wake us up. <laughs> he is very much dependent on us. Could you imagine an 8-month-old baby cooking his own food? <laughs> no, he does not do that. He would just cry and he would just say, in his baby language, feed me, mommy. Look at me, daddy. Carry me. <laughs> and now that he is a baby, he doesn't desire steak, chips, or chocolate. <laughs> he just wants milk. And we don't just feed our baby anything. We don't give him alcohol or lotion or shampoo. We give him something that is helpful for him. That is the posture that we should have. Like newborn babies, crave, be desperate, be always hungry, always longing, wanting to be fed, ever dependent on God. And God will give us what is beneficial for us. And in this context, He gives us His Word. That's the posture. That's the picture. We are like children before God. No matter what our age is, we will always be children before our Heavenly Father. And that gives us comfort. That gives us satisfaction that we would always be His children. We could always be like little children before our Heavenly Father. So the first one is the picture. Second one is the action. Put away and desire. You know, at first it may look like it's two different commands, but actually it just stems from one response. No, because we have a new identity, because we are part of God's family, we put aside all of those things because we long and desire for spiritual milk. That's what we desire for. What is the spiritual milk? You know, if we look at the context in the previous chapter, it's a continuation of chapter 1. And we could see here that the spiritual milk is the Word of God. 
because of what Christ did for us and the new identity we have. We put away all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander, and long instead for God's truth. Because the Word of God is God's truth. Walang halong kasinungalingan, purong katotohanan. That's why deceit, lies, malice are some things we turn away from because we desire, we taste, we long for this. You know, in our time today, some of you here that you're, who's watching may prefer to go all natural or all organic. May kilala ba kayong ganun? Maybe that person is a relative or a friend. Your lifestyle niya, pref- uh, he or she is all natural or organic. Now, I believe there's nothing wrong with that, but the way I see it, it's very challenging. At least I, I, I've, I've been trying to do that. <laughs> because sometimes what we see as all natural are not really all natural. <laughs> or if they're ever is some, it takes so much time to prepare and it's not readily accessible and sometimes it's even more expensive. But I'm here to tell you this, we have a privilege. We have something readily available that we can consume anytime. And not only that, we have something pure. We have something all truth. And that is the truth of God in His Word. And when we live it out, when we get to taste the goodness of God in our lives, it changes us. You know, maybe for some of us here, you're not a new Christian. Maybe you've been here for quite some time. Or maybe, maybe for some of you, you're, you're just new. Wherever we are in our walk with God, I believe God has already done something good to you. The question is, have you tasted it already? Maybe for some of us here, we remember of the times that when we read the word, wow, Grabe, saktong-sakto to sa pinagdadaanan ko ngayon. And we taste it, we absorb it. Or maybe we've seen God move to, in our lives miraculously. We have tasted that God is good. You see, when we think about and experience what God did to us through Christ on the cross, we say it's good. You know, for some of us here, maybe we're having a hard time to think about, ano nga ba? Lord, parang walang goodness na nangyari sa akin. Let me encourage you to go back to what Christ has done on the cross. And we can say, we can say that God is good. When we have seen some of God's promises come to pass, we can say He's good. Maybe we've been praying for some things and when the moment when God answered our prayers, wow, Lord, thank you. When we see Him work in our difficult situation, we can say that He is good. Yung mga buti na lang, nagkataon, God's grace, God's providence. I want to encourage all of us here to enjoy the good things God has given us. Our salvation, our secured destiny in heaven, our adoption as God's family, His Word, and on top of that, every good things, material or immaterial, that we have experienced in our lives. All because, not of our goodness, but because of God's goodness and kindness. And we desire, and Peter encourages us to desire more of that in our lives as we regularly ingest His Word. And what is the result of desiring God's Word and taste in his, and tasting His goodness? Diba yung una yung picture? Okay, the second one is that, uh, uh, that desire for us, diba? Turn away and desire the action. What's the result? That we may grow. Sabi dyan, no? That we may grow. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk that, it, that by it you may grow up into salvation. That's the result, that we may grow. You know, babies are so cute. And the thing is, they don't stay babies forever. Medyo nakakasa naman kung forever baby sila. We know that babies will eventually grow and, you know, contribute to society or fulfill God's purposes for their lives. You know, in the same way, as we constantly feed ourselves with God's Word, we will also grow up to be mature. As we feed, as, as we as a, uh, Nisha's parents feed Him with food, we are longing for Him to grow up strong. And it's the same, in the same way as we are dependent on God. And as God constantly provides for us, we will grow to maturity as well. 
as we regularly feed ourselves with God's Word and avoid deceit, hypocrisy, we will eventually grow and we will fulfill our purpose in Him. You see, as, as we end, we may be decades in our faith, but the beautiful thing is, and I've said this before, that we can always be God's children before Him. May we maintain that attitude of always desiring God's Word in our lives. And may this year, we, may this year bring us to new heights and growth unlike ever before. Let me end by reading a prayer that A.W. Tozer made. And as we, I read this, let me also lead all of us here to close in prayer. Tozer said, and I'm going to pray this also as well. Oh God, I have tasted thy goodness and it, has bought, and, it, and it has both satisfied me and made me thirsty for more. I am painfully conscious of my need for further grace. I am ashamed of my lack of desire, O oh God, the triune God. I, I want to want thee. I long to be filled with longing. I thirst to be made more thirsty still. Show me thy glory, I pray thee, so that I may know thee indeed. Begin in mercy a new work of love within me. Say to my soul, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Then give me grace to rise and follow thee up from this misty lowland where I have wandered so long. That's our prayer as well, God. Lord, I pray that we would constantly see your goodness and may you produce in us this hunger that we will not be satisfied by whatever the world will give us, but we will crave this pure spiritual milk that comes from you. May your word shape us, that we will rise up from whatever we are experiencing now and that we are able to step in your purposes in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Though fear may come, I'm holding on, I'm holding on to you. Though fear may come, I'm holding on, I'm holding on to you. Though fear may come, I'm holding on, I'm Before we go, let me just pray for all of us here. Lord, send us out to fulfill your purpose wherever we are right now, in our work, in our offices, in our homes, in our meetings, in our classes. Lord, may we not forget that it is you and your goodness that has allowed us to do all these things. And may we fulfill your purpose in these areas. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.